Prohibitionists hoped that cutting off the supply of liquor would, by itself, eliminate demand. But the law of the land didn't reckon with the laws of economics. Laws of supply and demand suggest that if the demand is there, people will pay a lot for a good supply. And so it created huge opportunity for the folks that were producing and distributing alcohol during Prohibition. It was a wildly profitable time. Any city big enough to have money to be made had its own bootlegging organization that, that built up to replace this vast supply and this huge multi-million dollar industry that suddenly vanished overnight. There was a lot of money to be made if you crashed someone else's turf and started selling booze there. As in any business, there are winners and losers in the competition for market share. In New York City, Meyer Lansky and Lucky Luciano forge a near monopoly. A one-time lawyer named George Remus corners the market in Cincinnati. And in Chicago, despite fierce rivalry from the North Side gang, it's Al Capone who becomes America's most infamous gangster. There's a really important moment in Capone's career when he is alleged to be involved in the shooting of a, of a state prosecutor, Billy McSwiggin. And he does something very interesting, something that really changes the course of his career calls a press conference, and he stands there and says, I had nothing to do with the murder of McSwiggin. I was paying him, he was on my payroll. Why would, I have, why would I have knocked him off? And it's really fascinating because until that moment, criminals were expected to be quiet to try to get away with what they were doing clandestinely, but Capone is standing up there and giving a press conference and saying, yeah, I'm a bootlegger, yes, I'm a criminal, but I didn't kill this guy. And Capone becomes a celebrity. Capone has this reputation for being this maniac with a machine gun and a cigar sticking out of his mouth, but he was actually a, a pretty gregarious guy. People liked being around Capone. He was a fun guy to talk to in the corner bar. Capone can often be found in the Green Mill, Chicago's most famous jazz club, listening to Louis Armstrong and enjoying a cocktail. The Southside Fizz, what people said is that Al Capone enjoyed it. It may or may not have been his favorite cocktail, but its ingredients definitely help mask the taste of the bad gin he's known for selling. Southside Fizz with the citrus, with the mint, with everything that goes into it, really covers up the gin. 